to my channel um thank you for coming back to this channel um thank you for all the new subscribers thank you for all the old subscribers thank you for everyone i appreciate your um engagement all right so in this video i'll be talking to you about is a part two kind of from the previous video i uploaded about how to get a supervisor a phd supervisor a master supervisor um now this is very important like i mentioned in my last video for some schools in canada or i would say most schools in canada you require they require to have a supervisor before you can apply to the school before you can get an admission to the school and getting a supervisor is a very um it's not a hard process i would say but it's a very important process that you need to go through so here are some tips that i would give you there's some tips i'll give you to help you get a supervisor the first thing you have to do is that um now going from the video i said before is that after you've gotten your course right and your area of specialization i'm going to use an example a cancer research like i like i did i did cancer or i'm doing cancer research and that's what i did for my um uh, masters so i kind of just saw that oh i think i have interest in this area why not use pursue this um, part for my for my phd now that doesn't mean that that's only the part i had interest in I had interest in other parts I had interest in stem cell i had interest in molecular biology genetics and all of that it wasn't just cancer so that's why i said you kind of have to identify your area of specialization it doesn't have to be one thing um i'm talking mostly about basic science because that's what i did i don't know about social sciences like that but i think it also applies to every department if you if you want to do history it might be history of the black people history of these people of the asian people all the you know all of these areas so you have to kind of identify what is your interest now that you've identified your, your area of specialization you go to the site of the school that you want to do and there's always a search word there is always a keyword a part where you can search anything on that school website then you can click there for example you can google cancer and then what is going to come out from there is all the supervisors all the researchers that are doing cancer everyone that is doing whatever thing you've googled their, their names are going to come out from that um in that school so you see why i said that it's more likely to for you to get supervisors with an area specialization than for you to go to the course and um, you might even see 10 supervisors doing cancer and remember you don't have interest in only cancer research you have interest in stem cell for example or genetics you have maybe three interests not just one but you see how cancer you've gotten 10 you've gotten maybe in genetics for example you get like five or um eight or like you get different um numbers and then you see that you're having people that you can send applications to so this is one tip for you is that you would um, check for supervisors using your area of specialization, not the course that you want to do. It might take weeks, sometimes it might take months for you to do all of these things. But I tell you, I tell you is worth it. If you invest your time into this, you will get something out of it. Don't rush at all. Take your time. So, so once you've clicked on the supervisor's name, you would um, it will take you to the profile, their profile, which is um maybe on the department's website and this profile will tell you everything about this person but sometimes they would have a link that will link you to their actual website they have a personal website now this is good because it means that because to be honest their profile on department websites is not always updated so it's what is what is on their personal websites that would that would matter so once you see that that they have a personal website you click on it and you go there so now now please you have to do your research on this supervisor you're applying to it's going to take some some time but it's very worth it because before you reach out to your supervisor now because the third step is for you to send an email to them for you to reach out to them but before you do that i would advise you to read on this supervisor read on them they have twitters they're on twitter um most times they are, they are on Twitter. That's or that's a very good way that um, supervisors communicate. Twitter, go to their Twitter, follow them on Twitter, read their papers. So in their um, website or in their profile, if they don't have a website, 
you would see selected publications. So after you've read this um, paper, make sure you read, you understand the paper. Then the next step is that you begin to construct your email. Now, for supervisors that don't have websites, um, it's email that you probably need to, you just need to send them an email. But for those that have a website, they typically will have a path where you can actually apply on their website. You can send them an, um, you can send your application on that website. They have like a, an application form and all of that on the website. Now I'm going to explain the two of them. So for those that have a profile and don't have a website, just a profile on the department, they have an email address there. So you go to the email address. Um, you would, you know, construct an email address. So how you construct your email is that you sell yourself. First thing you come out is your hook um, email. Your hook part is that, for example, if you have a good GPA, that's that's one of the things you want to highlight. You want to highlight that part. Of course, you say your name and then you talk about yourself. You talk about your um, your GPA. If that's what you did, if that's what you maybe had a 4.8 out of 5, for me, I had a, a high GPA, so that helped me. Um, so your GPA would help you if you have a high GPA. If you don't have a high GPA, don't worry. You can just tell, just talk about your your strength. So if you're someone that um, is passionate about something, you just talk about it. That's why I said you need to be able to read their research. So once you come there, you say your name, you say um, you you are doing your masters or you've you, you've done your masters, you finished with this GPA. Um, and then you studied this in your master's and then you read your paper and you mentioned the paper you read, you mentioned the paper you read and then you talk about the paper. But you read in this paper that they found that, um, so that they found that, so when you, when they did this, for example, when they added this treatment, it, it reduced this inflammation or you did something. And that's so interesting because that's what you studied in your master's, how you looked at it in this aspect and this happened and that you are very interested in actually going further and looking at it in this aspect. It's just like coming up with a research proposal, but it just is not very official, but you know, something is just telling them that, oh, you've done this in this way, you looked at this in, in inflammation, and you, when you saw the paper, it kind of picked your interest, and you are thinking that it might be good for, um, for it to be studied in this area. And they, I'm telling you, they're going to be like, who is this student? Wait, though. This person thinks, is thinking about my research. This person has interests in my research. Because if they see that you don't have interests, they're not going to... These people have like 100 emails already in their inbox. And they, I don't think they won't have time to read through all of them. So they're going to just open it and just look through it quickly. If you don't have anything that is interesting, they're going to close it. So you mentioning their paper and mentioning their research and the results they have in the paper means that you read it, you took your time to read it. Now this was what I did when I applied to my supervisor, when I sent emails. I told them about the interest I have in their, supervisor, like in their work. I talked about their work, I read their papers, I cited their papers in my email, I talked about my GPA, I talked about my strengths, I talked about my master's project. Um, and then you show them that you have value. And then once you do this, you also, I would advise you to attach your transcript if you have it. And if you have a CV, attach your CV. Now this is it. And then you send them an email. And also when you're sending the email, make sure you know when you're sending the email because it's a time difference in Nigeria and in Canada, depending on the province. So I would advise you to send the email in the, um, afternoon in Nigeria because when it's afternoon is Nigeria is morning. When you send it in the morning when they're just coming to the office, when they are just about to when they're already opening their email and that's the first thing they see they were gonna open it. So you have to be very tactical. You have to be very specific about the time you send them an email because these people have a bunch of emails. They have a bunch of emails to look at and they don't have time. So you have to be very specific about the time and also your subjects have to be very very um, meticulous. What is your subject? It has to be very, very catchy. Yeah. After you send the email, then you wait, right? Now, the next step, the next part I'm going to talk about is for supervisors that have a website. Now, with supervisors that have a website, um, they already have the application form there. You don't need to send an email. But I would advise you is that once you are done with the website, your application on the website, also send them an email. You, it shows that you have interest, that you really want the supervisor. Send them an email and also do the website as well. 
and then if you wait for some time and then you don't get a response you can send a reminder email it's very okay to send a reminder email i would advise you to wait for a week most times in official setting you give people one to two weeks to respond and if you wait and you've not gotten an email after one week or after two weeks you send them an email as a reminder that you send them an email and if you've not gotten back that you would appreciate it if you can you know that you really have interest in this and now you just see how now this is just one person you know it's going to take a bit of time for one person i are going to apply to like 10 people doing cancer research maybe another is doing cancer research um, doing genetics for example and then that's for one school you're doing the same thing for another school right all of this means that it doesn't mean that you're desperate it doesn't show desperation at all it means that you are passionate about what you're doing and i promise you that before you before like one month ends you get response you might even get response from supervisors you might just say that oh that they love your your application but they don't have space you might someone tell you that they have space but they don't have funding and you will have like one or two that respond to you that they want to do uh they want to follow up so the next thing that you would typically see with supervisors is that they will go they will tell you to have an interview now for my supervisor, I, I did an interview, I think two, two interviews with her. Um, now this interview also is very important because you have to show yourself very strong. Be confident in this interview. They just they, they want to just know what you know. They want to just see what you know. They want to um, um, just test you. If, when you're doing the interview, you dress um, corporately. Be in, a, in an area where there's good lighting. You can be in an office space if you possible. Don't just be in, in your bed and do the interview. Please don't be in your bed. Um, all of these things are things they look out for. They don't just, they don't, they like someone that is serious, someone that is passionate, someone that shows passion. Make sure you have enough internet and your phone is charged or whatever device you're using is fully charged. And also read more papers about them. Read more, not just one paper, read more papers. When they ask you questions, you answer them. You don't have to, if you don't know the questions, just say, oh, that's a very interesting question. I, I have never thought of that, but I really love looking look into that. Be calm and collected. Act, act like you have another option somewhere that they, they are not your last option, because if they see that you are acting desperate, they're going to run away. I tell you that all of this, if you don't love this, supervisors are going to be rushing you. So, and also some supervisors as well can, it might not be an interview. Mine was an interview. I had, I had another supervisor that reached out to me and told me to write some things. So um, he said that um, before he would um, take me, I have to write um, a couple of things. He gave me some things to write, you know, just to see how my writing skills would be like. He didn't want to meet, but he wanted me to just show that I could write. And some supervisors don't even want you to see even meet you. They just want to see, once they see your application, they are fine. They just say, okay, fine. You know, and then that's, that's it. You don't have to even meet them or do an interview. But all of these tips are very important because what is important is that you have to get a supervisor. They have to be able to see your application in a multitude of applications and actually for you to stand out and for them to pick you out of that. I mean, after they've agreed to supervise you, then you discuss your funding. Now, this funding is, like I said in my previous video, is what would keep you here. They will typically pay you um, a particular stipend for the amount of time you're going to be with them. And most times when you come here, they might pay for the first year, when you come here, then you can apply for scholarships in this place. There are many scholarships for graduate students and graduate students here. And then you can actually apply for them and then you can relieve them of the funding they have to pay you. That means they won't have to pay you anymore or they can even top up for the funding that you have. For me, when I came here and before coming here, my supervisor told me she didn't have funding for me. So I was still worried about that. And then as God would have it, I was able to get a scholarship, like fully funded scholarship for the fourth for four years so so that you know i could come here because if i if she had said that she didn't have funding i couldn't have come here because that's a lot of money that's a lot of money some might tell you that they will supervise you but they can't pay you i would advise you not to do that because i mean even though your parents are or you have money to do that i would advise you not to do that because it might it's very tough it's a lot of money to pay once you have that talk with your supervisor about funding you can go ahead to apply like I said in my previous video, so you can watch my previous video. And then after applying um, to the school for admission, then you want to get your admission, you can then apply for the visa. So yeah, I think that's all. I um, that's all tips I have. I I believe strongly believe that if you put all of this into action, you will have a positive response from your supervisor, and you can further 
you can go further with your application. If you have any questions, any further questions that you'd like me to answer, please let me know. Put them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Please like, please comment, please share, subscribe to this channel, um, turn on your notification bell and please engage. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.